there, monetization sentinels. Back off, I am Couch Coop. We are looking at No Man's Sky, new update, Endurance. Kubrick would love this game. Kubrick and Brian Cox playing this game, Couch Cult. It'd be amazing. Brian Cox is still alive, though. Let's look at what we got. Strangest update ever. It's all about freighters. It kind of points to nobody using them much, maybe. Probably wanted to incentivize a bit more interaction with them. But one of the cooler things is the whole asteroids being beefed up. They're looking awesome. As you saw in the intro, we'll have a look at them in a second. And there is some new content in the Nexus for multiplayer, which I didn't have the chance to get to. I just wanted to double check. They haven't done anything sneaky and new and not mentioned. And have a look at these cool asteroids and of course go into the freighters a bit the advantage of having a freighter is kind of it's a massive storage unit basically you can warp from it and it's just like having a base in space so it's quite convenient and you can put all of your ships in there but you've also got some npcs that can kind of do work for you there's some that can do expeditions bring money in you can talk to the captain there's all kinds of stuff going on so it was always quite cool, but to have it beefed up even more, it's kind of a cool incentive to actually get in the damn things because you're so busy with everything else in the base building, you never really got round to it. They haven't changed much on the existing freighters. I thought there might be a bit of rework with how they look, but they were cool and massive anyway, and I really loved that warping animation. That was kind of a new thing a couple of years ago, but it's still awesome to see it going on. You are also constantly inundated from NPCs on other freighters asking you to either protect them, come and buy their freighter. It's a bit crazy. The radio's going off mad for a game that's called No Man's Sky. I did spot a little dude mining, like an NPC. Couldn't interact with them, I just could look. Reminded me quite a lot of Elite Dangerous, actually. It's cool to see those improvements. I don't know how new that addition is, but there's just more and more going on in that distance between the planets now, with a lot of colorful nebulas as well, and strange sort of creatures. They've really beefed up the algorithm in what it kicks out in like random space furniture. There's loads of that going on now. It's very interesting to just commute between planets before it was quite a barren existence. Just checking my amazing solar powered ship within the freighter bay itself. Not too many changes here, but you do see quite a lot more movement with NPC ships coming and going. And of course I flipped it to the first person view which I rarely go to nowadays because I love that third person idea but I just want to check this should be running at a peg 60 and the game's looking pretty damn smooth on the PlayStation 5. Skimpy as hell on the unlocks for the colours of the freighter, my god nothing. So there's an idea to try and open up the XP of the freighter itself which will go up if you start warping in it, moving it around, starting getting some of your fleets going but for me I just had sweet F8. All I could do was change from blue to green on the old jets. One thing I think I may have spotted is that there's a bit more smoke in interior areas, especially with ships in them. That came in with the volumetric, I know, but there just seems to be loads more of it, especially within the planetary space stations and in the landing base of your freight craft. I don't mind it, it's really cool, but I wish there'd be a bit more movement when these ships pop in and out, if it's sort of spreaded slightly. I know that's probably a bit of a big ask but it's great to see small things make quite big changes on an atmospheric level within those space stations themselves that reflective floor was also put in so the whole thing's looking pretty juicy now talking of juicy let's have a butchers of these asteroids now there were blatantly denser pockets of asteroids in and around solar systems between the planets etc they look cool they've increased the density and changed up a lot of the actual fragmented look of them all giving it way more variety the old stuff was very cookie cutter it was just like snow blind this is very much detail with the rays hitting them at different angles and some of them have got actual quite detailed textures with on them themselves that one near camera at the bottom there this sort of detail just was not there prior to this update navigating through hasn't really changed that much it sort of feeds you in unless you make a beeline for one of the bigger asteroids you're just going to be fine and mining them hasn't changed much either 
but it's great to see how the sun's rays hit the whole sky and bounce off these various objects. I am personally super impressed with this. I think it's awesome. I just wish they'd bundled it in with more. And we'll talk about that in a second, because when it comes to planetary, actual base building or walking around, nothing has changed in this update. We kind of knew that with the notes, but it's just weird that only asteroids and freighters get the update treatment this time around. haven't really mentioned before in any of my videos on the updates but it does point towards the Freya material and it is the fleets or the AI friendly craft that you get coming to help you if there's beef in and around your freighter it's really cool I love chilling with them flying back to the freighter with them it's another layer to adding companions to your team of craft over at the freighter side I wanted to talk briefly about a certain upcoming space adventure explorer shooter under the name of Starfield. Bethesda kind of are quite good at the areas of this game really lacks in. Stuff like quest depth and NPC dialogue and just a template of really cool story that stretches over the entire world or galaxy map or whatever and now we're going to get Bethesda and Todd attempt this and I'm thinking it could kind of pencil in exactly where this game's weak and make it an incredible space exploration game. And that's one thing I wanted to get to is that thinking back prior to No Man's Sky coming out looking at all its concept art and seeing that very much solidarity vibe pushed and the fact that you're on your own you're, you're thousands of miles from the nearest station you're taking risks you're going down to an unknown planet you don't know what could be on there you're taking all manner of equipment with no man's sky that kind of scenario never really comes around yeah it gives you like some funny like story nuggets and you go to terminals that have got stuff on them but you're never really crapping yourself and the equipment that you take down isn't going to ruin or make or break that particular quest line so i'm looking forward to some depth on that front bethesda could bring that to us in the form of no man's skyrim and let's just see what happens next year with that i think Think that they need to hold back and back the key with a good space exploration game is variety i think and i know that they're probably looking at the outcomes on their algorithm and thinking the planets are too samey let's try and mix things up a bit and that brings me on to the point of procedural generation a game can only procedurally generate the assets that are put into it by the developers if there's only three assets you're only going to see an X amount of outcomes. So it's important that there's huge variables. We all saw this at the beginning of No Man's Sky. Everybody just had the same damned annoying faced aliens on the same damn planets because there just wasn't enough variety for that algorithm to pick from to give you that impression that it's randomized. So let's see how much effort they put into that on Starfield because so far from that demo, I don't see a huge amount of procedural generation. I imagine that they'll allow it on some galaxies or planets. Maybe that could be a way forward. They kind of did a little bit of that on Fallout 76. Okay, enough speculation. Let's finish up and say that the Endurance update is pretty cool. I want some comments on you guys about whether it's given you the opportunity to fire the game up again. And you're thinking, yeah, I really want to look at that. I was also thinking about doing one video documenting all of the updates because I've got footage of every single stage. That would be a very interesting journey, I think. So I have been Couch Good. I will see you down there. And don't forget to like and subscribe.